Welcome back to another episode of Hertfordshire Zoo. Now, similar to last episode, on this episode to begin with, we have Salty Shores. Now, the reason why I have not shown the build for this again is because it's quite basic. It is just some custom fencing, a pond in the middle, and a roof uh, for the saltwater crocodiles. I've done crocodiles before, so I didn't really see any difference, really, just other than filling the quota up. So this is what we've got. So I hope you like this. On today's episode, though, as we come to an end of this tour, believe it or not, I was actually, these animals should have been moving. I, I had press play. As you can tell by the title, we are building platypus towers. Now, I've had a look at my recent builds and I've not really been challenging myself enough. So I wanted to build something that was mainly underwater viewing with obviously some land above. So I got these columns and the driftwood planks, about 50 of these columns, and I done the thing where you can basically grab them all and rotate them so that they're the same. Uh, I then went round the entire part of that as best as I could with the glass barrier because that's the only barrier that works with water the way I wanted it to. I could have done it in wood uh, with the glass in the middle but I, I just I think glass looks 10 times better. Once I was relatively happy with the shape I then had to make them all roughly the same height. Uh, some of them are ever so slightly higher uh, or lower. I then adjusted the planks to make sure that it was somewhat of a tight fit. I knew it was never going to be perfect because I couldn't angle the barrier itself the way I wanted it to. Um, as you can see I do sort of struggle where the pathing is. I, in hindsight I probably could have taken the pathing out and adjusted it from there but at that point I'd found sort of where I wanted the pathing to be so I didn't want to take that out really. I then had to adjust, uh, not adjust sorry, build the interior for this area. I didn't want it to just be out in the open. I wanted it to be something that you could kind of walk into if you were actually going to a zoo. So yet again because I love building off-grid I had to adjust a lot of the walls and get them to line up as best as I could. Easier said than done and I probably could have done it a lot easier but or many other ways but this is the way that I've done it and I ended up building these two sort of towers on the side and this is where the name platypus towers come from they don't actually get any bigger <laughs> so I ended up building a hard shelter almost into a tower to make it be basically platypus towers the name probably could have used some work uh, I did plan on having the two towers on the side a lot bigger and having like a big statue on the either tower however I didn't have a statue for a platypus at at the time so I had to improvise and ended up going with the tower as the hard shelter just here I'm obviously doing some terrain forming uh, for somewhere for the platypus to sit on land I then had to adjust that uh, so that the water can go in and so that it would be snug against the water as best as I uh, sorry against the tower building that I have here uh, as best as I could although water in this game can be difficult yet again you can see me adjusting things because it's not on the grid and the path system follows the grid as best as it can and if you don't follow the grid then you end up with paths everywhere that don't really line up with the grid pieces so I've had to adjust quite a lot hence the reason this is a bit of a longer video I then had to put in the flooring which you can see uh, it's it's just it doesn't all match up the way that I would want it to which is quite annoying so there are quite a lot of pieces that kind of overlap as you can see with the 
planted area. Um, in a in a in a perfect world, I'd have that absolutely spot on in terms of sizing, and I wouldn't need to have adjusted anything to make it seem that uh, to, so that it doesn't overlap. But you know, we, we can only do what we can do. Here, I'm building the viewing area. So when you come in, you, you're not just met with a drop. This is to go there. Uh, it doesn't quite link up with the glass because the glass is concaved and angled. So it doesn't quite link up the way that I would want it to. Um, again, to make it look better, I probably could have used the wood. But unfortunately, because the wood, to me, screams of European builds rather than Oceana or Australian I didn't put I didn't use that barrier and there's not really an Australian barrier which is unfortunate so I ended up going with just the glass and then sort of trying to get it to merge as best as I could using the glass and the driftwood Then I decided to put these planted squares, planted wood panels absolutely everywhere and fill them with the well, some plants just to make it look a bit better and look a bit more aesthetically pleasing. I don't think any of the plants that I put in there actually end up affecting the platypus environment. Uh, so it's not, it's not the worst thing although they don't have a lot of environment in terms of like plant life that you can actually put in there. I wanted to put a lot more on the flooring of the water area, but I couldn't because of the limitations that I had. And I still wanted the top bit, the land, to look okay, somewhat decent. Yet again, struggling with the uh, barriers because Water in this game, as I said, doesn't quite work the way that you would want it to. Uh, it goes up in, I think it's meters. So if you have one that's like 1.5 meters, it will be half a meter lower than the water, th than the top that you would want it to be at. I know I haven't explained that very well, but it, it, it yeah. Um, essentially, if you want it to be somewhere, it needs to be in full height so the, the the glass would need to be two meters for it to be two meters in water I've probably explained that really badly but still um, I got it to a point where I was happy by adding in some terrains so that they can swim in or get out and get in then it added these rocks around the perimeter of the build and rotated a few so that they weren't just copy paste copy paste copy paste I do end up adding in some foliage rocks. Essentially, it's these rocks with some of the fungus, uh, ghost fungus mushrooms, along with some vines to make it look a bit better. But just looking at a, a, a wall of black rocks, and then I put these driftwood poles in or uh, posts on every single point of the glass panels and then supported the roof with some more different panels. So you'll see that I keep taking things out of that area and what I do is I duplicate the poles or something else, do what I need to do in terms of, so this bit is just so that it covers the roof so that you're not looking straight up at the, the roof and it's just just a bit weird. So I ended up getting these planks and uh, duplicating them three times or twice, twice, and angling them slightly. And this is where the education boards go. I get rid of the driftwood planks and then, oh, sorry, posts. And then I know that that should fit in without much issue. I just need to angle it correctly. And I might have to move a few things around to make sure that it is how I want it to be. I then sort of struggled with what I should do here because nothing was quite 
going the way I wanted it to because of the, the limitations when you have something that's not on the grid. So again, I end up getting these panels and just lining it up as best as I could to make it look somewhat decent. I think it looks okay. So I'm, I'm happy with the way that that's come out in the end and I put these driftwood posts in again. I do like the, the driftwood planks, uh, posts, I keep calling them planks. I then had to adjust the path because it wasn't the, the flooring again to me the flooring if you put flooring down they should be able to walk across it but they can't and of course you can't edit it over a surface that's going up or down it is solely just flat obviously at this point I knew what I was going to call it so I spelt out platypus towers at one point I actually ended up putting a B I don't know why I put B. I think I had some other animal in my mind and it was going to be Platypus. But we do eventually settle on Platypus Towers and I end up using a, a, a piece that I've not even known about before, which is wallpaper. And you can really colour these basically to how you want, uh, which, is, which is really interesting. And I will definitely be using more of this in the future. You've got four different colour options when you colour in the wallpaper and there are a few different options on there as well so I'll definitely be using that just wanted to make sure that that fit in the area that I had because I actually forget how big those letters can be sometimes I then surround it with this lovely Australian decorated log and try and change up how it looks slightly by putting in the smaller one in the middle and on the sides. I also add in some lighting. Again, the lighting in this game is not great and it's really difficult to tell if it's actually going to look good or not until the light switches on or if you get it in a dark area. Even if you turn on the lights now, it's really difficult to see it, as you can see. So I do end up putting in these little spotlights uh, on the bottom and on the top because in, you just you can see how bad the lighting is and how much it's not actually lighting anything up and it is a pain it really is a pain um, but I didn't want to take these off because they were actually doing what I wanted them to do I just had to adjust them every now and then so that they all fit because I don't know if it's something that I'm doing wrong but whenever I duplicate something, it goes slightly off so it's not straight. Really frustrating. I then put in the log barrier around the outside because I thought that actually kind of does fit with what I've got. <laughs> I know I said earlier it doesn't fit, but the log barrier at the top I think fits. But I think having the whole thing in log barrier with some glass doesn't fit. I know that's a bit peculiar. I then finish off this build with the fungal foliage rocks which you can see I'm adding in some rocks and some foliage and seeing if they like it or not then I build the rock by adding in these vines and other little pieces of foliage and some fungus and add these rocks in period not not sparsely sparsely a few times I've added several of them across the rock formation on the perimeter of the enclosure itself just to add something so when you're looking at it it's not just a pile of rocks there's at least something as you can see I do go in and delete a few and then just add these rocks in uh, I think it actually ends up making it look really nice it's a bit different it breaks up the black rock quite a bit and it just fits in really nicely so I, I think that actually looks okay and I had to make a couple of adjustments to get these to fit in I don't really understand what happened with the rocks there but you know it, it doesn't matter too much I added in all this bracken and then found out they don't actually I think they don't like bracken so I had to adjust that a little bit um, at the end 
it's annoying when you discover that they don't like something and then you have to go and change it. I probably went a bit over the top on the outside, this, this upper piece, because at the moment, unless I change it, nobody can see it, so I don't really think it matters how many plants I actually have up the top. I could have none and sort of really feel the bottom in. But I've sort of gone maybe 60-40, and I might change that. I'm really not sure. Oh no, they do like bracken, sorry. They do like bracken, but as you can see, the coverage is already at like 70%. So I had to get rid of quite a lot um, every now and then to just to have something in the, in the, in the bottom. So I ended up getting rid of the bracken because it, that took up 10% of my coverage and it sort of allowed me to put more hydrilla plants in and some other smaller pieces under the water and then made sure that I had the perfect amount. Added in some of these rocks that I have laying around because it's a pain to try and keep getting the same colour and things. So just made some final adjustments and then I ended up building this tower which I don't know why I didn't just go with this hard cover. Um, I ended up taking a lot of the hard tower, sorry, the, uh, taking a lot of the hard cover and just moving it over and having a bit, what I should have done is deleted the roof and then just added on top of it. But <laughs> instead I ended up building pretty much the same thing right next door to it. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why. It, it doesn't make sense looking at it now. But I've done it. I think I just wanted to... I think it was the colour because you can't just colour drop in this, unfortunately. You can't say, right, I want that colour because sometimes it doesn't quite copy across. So I ended up doing, doing that, putting it in and calling that the tower. Uh, it's a bit of a question mark. And then finally... I think finally I added in the education boards which I flipped completely and put two of those in with an educational speaker hanging off the roof and I do actually end up putting these inside of like a small driftwood piece container for them just to make it look a bit better than just having some hanging TVs and I actually think it turned out okay it wasn't the final thing then. I had this staff walking area. I don't actually think... I, I'm not sure if those no entry signs actually work on people, but they have no reason to go down there because all it does is takes you to the wind turbine anyway. And then I had in the education and the plants in this area. To finish off the enclosure itself I added in a vista point or vista point added in this little bracket and the educational speaker and I believe yes I copy all of this across uh, and this goes into the area where I've just put the education parts again I had to copy it because it wasn't quite linked up finish off with some donation bins some trash cans or trash bins or bins and copy and pasted the platypus towers name on the inside just because I didn't really like the, the blank wall added in some lighting on the inside and that is the finished product <laughs>